In today's lesson, we're going to cover inscribed angles. First, let's refresh what a central angle is. A central angle is one that has its vertex in the center of the circle. And so it's created with two radii. The relationship between this central angle here and the arc that it intercepts right here is that they are congruent. They are equal to each other. So if the central angle was 30 degrees, then the arc that it intercepts is also 30 degrees. If you want more practice with central angles, we'll have a video out on that soon. An inscribed angle is one where the vertex is on the circle itself. So it could be down here. So let's have this inscribed angle intercept the same arc as the central angle. The inscribed angle over here measures exactly one half of the arc that it intercepts. So because the arc here that it intercepts, meaning it cut off here and there. This arc measured 30 degrees, therefore half of 30 would be 15. So the inscribed angle over here will measure 15 degrees. Let's take a look at another example. This time, the inscribed angle will look like this. So if we want the measure of this inscribed angle here, again, we know that it's going to be one half of the intercepted arc from here to here, this entire piece. Now what's interesting about this inscribed angle is that if we were to connect the endpoints here of these two segments, it looks like it goes through the center here. And if so, that would make this segment the diameter. As we know, the diameter splits the circle in half, which means that the arc from here to here is 100 and 80 degrees. Therefore, the inscribed angle here is going to be exactly one half of that. 180 divided by two gives us 90 degrees. Therefore, this angle is a right angle. So anytime you see an inscribed angle and the endpoints here connect through the center of the circle, you'll know that the inscribed angle here is always going to be 90 degrees. Let's look at another interesting example. Okay, so now we have four inscribed angles. There's one here, two, three, and four. With so many lines, it's sometimes hard to see, but what we should notice is that this inscribed angle is intercepting this arc from here over to here. We can see that here. This was one part of the angle, and this was the other part. So the arc got intercepted. And then notice these two points are also part of this inscribed angle down here. So these two angles are actually going to be congruent to each other because they intercept the same arc. I'll redraw this inscribed angle so it's a little easier to see. But we can clearly see that this inscribed angle and this inscribed angle both intercept the same arc. Therefore, if we have the measure of this arc or of one of these two angles, we can find the other measures. So in this case, if the intercepted arc here measured 20 degrees, then the intercepted arc here is going to be double that, and that would be 40 degrees. And of course, the inscribed angle over here is also going to be one half of 40 since it intercepts that arc as well. So this is also 20, and therefore these two inscribed angles are congruent. As far as these other two inscribed angles, we can see that those also intercept the same arc from here to here. And we can see that if we were to redraw, that's one inscribed angle here, and the other one is here. By intercepting the same arc, both inscribed angles up here are congruent to each other, and they both measure one half of this arc's measure. Let's take a look at one last example. Let's say we have a quadrilateral that's inscribed inside this circle. First, I'm going to label the angles. We'll call them A, B, C, and D. Now, if this was a square or a rectangle, of course, each of these angles would measure 90 degrees. And we would know that if the diagonals of this quadrilateral both went through the center of the circle, just like we saw before, making the inscribed angle 90 degrees. 
In this case, the diagonals would not pass through the center of the circle. So there is one important rule to remember, and that is any quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle like this one, the opposite angles are supplementary. In other words, angle A plus angle C are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. Same with B and D. So if angle B happened to be 80 degrees, then angle D would have to measure 100 degrees. If angle A was 50 degrees, then angle C would have to measure 180 minus 50, which would be 130 degrees. Now, if you ever forget the rule that opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary, here's another trick to remember that. We can see that angle D right here intercepts the arc from here all the way around to here. So it's taking up all of this part of the circle. Notice what angle B is doing. Angle B is intercepting the rest of the circle on this side. So even if we don't know what the measure of this arc is or this one, we should know that the entire circle has a measure of 360 degrees. Therefore, the arc that D intercepts plus the arc that B intercepts here forms the full circle. That means combined, they intercept 360 degrees total. As we've learned, an inscribed angle's measure is always one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Therefore, B and D would have to combine to 180 degrees, and the same is true with A and C. Angle A is intercepting the arc from here. We follow the angle to here. That takes up this portion of the circle. And angle C intercepts the rest of the circle. Those also combine to 360 degrees. One half of that is 180. And therefore, these two combined must be 180 degrees. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.